Tomorrow marks four weeks since 19 students and two teachers were murdered inside of Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. And this photo obtained by KVU News and the Austin American Statesman is giving us a closer look at the police response that's been under so much scrutiny. KVU senior reporter Tony Pilhetsky joins us now tonight. And Tony, we want to preface all of this by saying to viewers, that the details you're about to tell us are very hard to hear, but that this photo is our first look inside the school on May 24th. And it's so significant because it really broadens our understanding of what happened and the police response that terrible day. The main headline to come out of this is that we now know that police officers had rifles as well as at least one ballistic vest uh, within about 19 minutes after first arriving at that school. You can see in this photograph that an officer to the left had that high powered weapon and that the officer on the right had a ballistic shield. The timing is important. This is at 1152 in the morning, 19 minutes minutes after the gunman entered the school. But keep in mind, this is based on a new calculation and a new timeline that I was able to review today. It took another 58 minutes before officers eventually stormed the classroom. I want to walk you through this new timeline. This is according to investigators that they have put together. The gunman got to Robb Elementary School at 1128 AM, crashing his grandmother's truck outside and exiting with a rifle and a bag full of ammunition. They say he fired shots at witnesses nearby. At 11.30 a.m., police got their first 911 call about the crash and shots fired. Just two minutes later, that's when the killer hopped a fence at the school and shoots at the building. One minute later, 11.33 a.m., he entered the school through an unlocked door unobstructed. At 11.44 a.m., Uvalde City Police and School District Police officers started taking gunfire and moved back to get cover. After this, law enforcement sources tell us that teams on the ground were making calls saying send all the firepower you can. And this is, of course, where this photograph fits in. 1152, you can see it there on your screen. We see officers standing in the hallway at that elementary school, uh, apparently trying to figure out what to do next. But again, it was not until 58 minutes two minutes shy of an hour at 1250 PM that US Border Patrol tactical teams arrive before making an entry and killing the gunman. So this is just a lot of new information. And I have to be honest with you, it's a lot to make sense of mentally and emotionally, frankly. We should say that you did view the video and it's mostly from that angle where you can see down the hallway uh, you did see the killer enter the building. Right. Uh, you saw the response to the police officers that were there. Could you tell from the video you saw uh, if the officers seemed to be unorganized? Were they hesitant? Was there any indication there was something wrong at that point? One thing that I want to say that became very clear to me is that initially with regard to the gunman entering this classroom, it happened so fast. I mean, it truly he walked into the school, he briefly stopped, I mean, barely even a stop, I would say glanced at a door, and then you can see him turn to the right, go down the hall, enter the classroom, and there is a hail of gunfire. So you can hear that on the video You absolutely as well. hear it. Um, you know, I have to tell you just in terms of, of the details, um, one thing that's so striking to me is as he's walking down the hall, you actually see a little boy come out of the bathroom, peek around the corner and retreat, knowing that an armed gunman was in his school, in his hallway. Tony, you've seen this video. Is there a chance that this video could be released to the public? And have lawmakers seen this video yet? To my knowledge, no, no lawmakers have seen this. I mean, this is information that is in many ways being tightly held within the investigation, obviously involving state, local, and federal law enforcement officials. But I have to say, and I shared this on Twitter not, not long ago, and that is um, while there is a push and an effort, obviously, to prevent the information from becoming public, 
obviously there are some people with access to information who are compelled by the public's right to know and therefore are frankly putting the information out. I want to ask you more about the video you saw. Yeah. We were told initially that the officers attempted in some form or fashion with a key, without a key, to get into the room when they got into the school hallway. Did you see any indication that that happened when they got into the building attempting to open the door to 111 or 112? So this is what I can tell you, that soon after they were inside the school, they did make an effort to go to the classroom. From the vantage point that I was watching, it's difficult to know exactly, you know, did they touch the door? Did they move the door handle? What I can tell you is that they took fire. They took rapid fire. And at that point, you see them blown back and, and retreat. But then after that, there seemed to be no real effort to regroup for quite some time and, and figure out what to do next. Um, based on the timeline that I have seen, and I want to say that the timeline is based on time stamps on the video. Mm -hmm. on the vi so, which you can so clearly see. You can right. clearly see, and it's critical because it helps create a narrative of, of what exactly happened. Also, in addition to that, though, police officers' body cameras have been transcribed, and you can hear uh, police officers saying, if there are kids in there, we've got to go in. Why aren't we going in? And so 30, 40, 45 minutes before they make entry, they're having this conversation among themselves. Another thing that I want to point out is that uh, Police Chief Pete Arredondo from the Uvalde School District Police Department, obviously he has had a lot of focus on, mm -hmm. on him and th the actions he took that day. One thing that was striking to me is that probably 30 minutes before they ultimately breached the door, he actually did float the idea of trying to neutralize, that's the police word for taking down the gunman, uh, through a window um, and, and thought, can, can we possibly get to him through a window? And yet, that was never really done. So you heard that? It, it's transcribed oh, and, okay. and from the body camera footage. Wow. And so you do just get the sense, almost from the word go, that this effort truly did not have a lot of organization or cohesion. Um, in the video you saw, did you actually see them at the end of that time frame go into that classroom and end this? Was that part of the video you saw? You do. Um, and one thing that was also striking to me is that as they are assembling and about to breach this door, they had called in medics. And so you see um, medics who were there and, and ultimately reach the room. And some of the last frames of the video were them, you know, trying to render aid. Um, but again, I don't know if this video will ever be made public. I do want to say, I, I am not in possession of this video. I want to point that out. Um, I have the, the screen grab that we have shown. I don't have the video, um, but I think it will be interesting in coming days whether or not it is actually made public. Because I do think it absolutely um, widens the lens on what happened that awful day. Amazing work as always, Tony. Thank you. I know that had to have been difficult to, 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 to see, but we're glad you were able to tell us what you saw on that video. And I know the parents of those poor children are having to learn all this in real time as well. So. I think it's important yeah. for understanding. They need to know the truth and know what happened. Stop this from ever happening again. Tony Plohetsky, Senior Reporter. Thank you, Tony, for Thank being you, here. Tony. Thank you.